Heath reads a book. All right, today I'm starting a new series, and that's just going to be me reading books because I feel like what we're missing is um, there's a lot of great information in books. You, you know how every time uh, a book gets turned into a movie, people say, "Oh, it's not as good as the book." Well, okay, but the, you can't fit if you put a book into movie format, into video format, it would be as long as some really long animes with like 300 and some episodes. And that's maybe unpos not possible, so let's try just having a video conversation, the YouTube community plus books, in the same way like John Green is highlighting with literature classes on Crash Course, which is great. So here's just my... I, I want to read more because I feel like it'll help me be more auditory, be more well-spoken and articulate, which I like. It, it's been shown to improve uh, uh, vocabulary, things like this. So, I, I just, I feel maybe it'll help me, uh, maybe it helps you, maybe it won't, but you don't have to watch it. That's the beauty about the internet. You don't have to look at anything. So, uh, this is for anyone that wants to see or hear the book. Maybe they just rather somebody read it to them. I know that I did as a child, especially with uh, dealing with ADD and stuff like I, I literally books put me to sleep. I couldn't help it. I, I wanted I wanted to read Harry Potter. I just I literally fall asleep. So it was just easier if someone else read it. So I'm just gonna read books. Uh, maybe it'll be the uh, um, the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Just because why not? I feel like I need to read that. It's been in my shelf. I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna start simpler with this book, A Hundred Things You're Not Supposed to Know by Russ Kick. Kind of an awesome name. So, let's begin. Um, so this is like the little inside part. Here's the big, not-so-secret secret. People in power, government and religious leaders, heads of big corporations, the rich and well-connected, all have one major goal, to stay in power. And they'll do whatever it takes to make sure that happens. Sometimes this means suppressing the truth and covering up facts that might make the rest of us angry enough to challenge the powerful, or at least to have a good laugh at their expense. That's why we need people like Russ Kick, dedicated to discovering and revealing all the juicy secrets that vested interests have tried to bury. Using careful research and impeccable sources, Kick uncovers the hidden truth. For example, while self-appointed censors warn constantly about the dangers of pornography, the fact is that pornography has existed since the very first cave people carved dirty pictures into walls, and civilizations have managed to thrive all along. It's also true that George Washington embezzled government funds. Two atomic bombs were dropped in North Carolina. One of the poles, one of the popes wrote an erotic book. Oh, continued on the back flap. The world's museums contain innumerable fakes, and Gandhi refused to let his dying wife take penicillin, yet he took quinine to save himself. Look inside for surprising but true information about inaccurate HIV tests, crimes committed by the CIA, genetically engineered children, and much, much more. So, yeah, let's try it. Alright, I'll just read, I don't know, I'll read until I come to a nice stopping point, I guess. We'll see where that's at. Maybe I'll have to force it. Under things you're not supposed to know. Da, 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 da. All right, introduction. What turns a fact into something you're not supposed to know, basically, what, okay, let me start. What turns a fact into something you're not supposed to know? Basically, it happens when that piece of information is upsetting, embarrassing, discomforting, or even damaging to a powerful party. The list of such parties is long. Leaders of nations, legisl legislators, militaries, intelligence agencies, justice systems, regulatory agencies, corporations, mainstream media, the medical establishment, the educational system, religious institutions, racial and gender groups, academics and scholars in various disciplines, guardians of public morality, followers of ideologies, hypersensitive leftists, conformist rightists, and others. Other resistance comes from the fact that every historical figure has developed a cult of worshippers and cheerleaders who utterly refuse, in the face of all evidence, to admit the failings, hypocrisies, and in some cases the outright fraudulence of their idol. In other cases, a fact doesn't offend an easily 
pinpointable institution or group. Instead, it's taboo because it exposes societal lies, the fables we tell ourselves in order to sugarcoat harsh reality. With this in mind, it's time to present a cavalcade of troublesome facts, compressed and boiled down to their very essences, so that you can quickly digest them in an info-glutted world. For further explorations, references are given in the back. So it sounds like, basically, you've got a lot of, I mean, it's stuff we already knew, right? You've got people who are constantly trying to keep stuff hidden because it makes them look bad, like they're dirty secrets, and you hear referred to as like skeletons in the closet. But that, we need truth and reconciliation. This is the highest level of mental evolution. So like, life sucks, which is that you just think all the world is awful, everything about it. This is where people start shooting schools and stuff. This is a bad mental place. And then it's like, my life sucks. And this is where people get where they're like, Oh, my life would be great if only I had this or that or that, but I don't, so my life sucks. And that's, that's just the negative complaining people. And then the next level up is, I'm great, and you're not. Uh, that's where a lot of people are. And this is, you know, it gets people through. At least they're confident within themselves. Like, you're able to look at life and be like, okay, well, at least I'm doing right. It doesn't necessarily mean you are, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a step up, right? Constantly evolve. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Uh, the next level up is we're great. This is like, if you're in a group, like say you work at Google, we're Google, we're great. Uh, the rest of the world, I don't know, but like we're good. And then the top, the top, 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 tippy top is life's great. This is, this is your, your people that, um, see the world for what it is, which is an amazing place, or at least they see the potential of what it can be if it's not currently. And they know it's worth protecting and fighting for. It's truth and reconciliation. This is, this is ideally where you want to be, but everyone can't be. Like, we're just not. We're, everyone's in varying stages. So we need to, instead of pretending that whatever level we're at is, makes us special, we're better than other people, no, we need to reach out to everyone, try and understand the different levels, try and reach out and, and, and help people reach inner peace or, or, or deal with issues maybe they're having if they want help. Um, whatever you can do, just make the world a better place than, you were, than it was given to you. At least that's how I look at life. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's uh, um, some weird, skewed, privileged perspective. But I just I feel like it can't be a bad thing to try and make the world better, especially since I'm so privileged. I've been given so much. I just want to give back. So anyway, moving on. So number one, the Ten Commandments we always see aren't the Ten Commandments. First Amendment battles continue to rage across the U.S. over the posting of the Ten Commandments in public places. Courthouses, schools, parks, and pretty much anywhere else you can imagine. Christians argue that they're a part of our Western heritage that should be displayed as, or as, ubiqui as ubiquitously, ubiquitously, there it is, as traffic signs. Congressman Bob Barr hilariously suggested that the Columbine Massacre wouldn't have happened if the Ten Commandments, also called the Decalogue, had been posted in the high school, and some government officials have directly, purposely disobeyed court rulings against the display of these Ten, Command ten Directives supposedly handed down from on high. From on high. And just to be clear, that is definitely what it says. Whoop. This line. Anyway, too bad they're all talking about the wrong rules. Every decalogue you see, from the 5,000 pound granite behemoth inside the Alabama State Judicial Building to the little wallet cards sold at Christian bookstores, is bogus. Simply reading the Bible will prove this. Getting out your King James Version, turn to Exodus 20, uh, colon 2 17. You'll see the familiar list of rules about having no other gods, honoring your parents, not killing or coveting, and so on. At this point, though, Moses is just repeating to the people what God told him on Mount Sinai. These are not written down in any form. Later, Moses goes back to the mount where God gives him two tab tables of stone with rules written on them, Exodus 31, 18. 
But when Moses comes down the mountain lugging his load, he sees the people worshipping a statue of a calf, causing him to throw a tantrum and smash the tablets on the ground. Exodus 32.19 In neither of these cases does the Bible refer to commandments. In the first instance, they are words which God spoke. While the tablets contain testimony, it is only when Moses goes back for the new tablets that we see the phrase Ten Commandments, Exodus 34:28. In an interesting turn of events, the commandments on these tablets are significantly different than the ten rules Moses recited for the people, meaning that either Moses' memory is faulty or God changed his mind. Thus, without further ado, we present to you the real Ten Commandments as handed down by the Lord unto Moses and plainly listed in Exodus 34, 13-28. We eagerly await all the new Decalogues which will undoubtedly contain this correct version. 1. Thou shalt worship no other god. 2. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Whatever that means. 3. The feast of unleavened bread thou shalt keep. Okay. Uh, four. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Five. Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, or of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. This is very confusing. Thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Um, okay. I'm going to let you guys talk about that in the comment section and help me understand what that means. Or make a video response, please. Uh, Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God. Okay, so three times in the year all your man children should appear before God. I'm guessing that means go to church. I don't quite know what that means, but okay. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. I'm going to have to look up leaven to see what that means. Uh, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. And ten, thou shalt not see a kid, i.e. a young goat, in his mother's milk. What I'm getting from this is a whole bunch of rules that either A, need some historical context from someone who knows what they're talking about to help break this down properly so that not only, it's, it's like reading Shakespeare, you have to understand the context, you have to understand the way the words were used, etc. I feel like there's more to this than, than our current version of English, which is translating other languages, is able to clearly articulate. So I'd very much like to hear someone else's opinion on this if you have one. Okay, uh, as this is 13 minutes, I'm going to stop there and I'll move on to the next one in the next video. So. Click here for the next video and see you next time.